Hey everybody, happy Monday. Today I'm gonna to be talking about five things that fish keepers should never do. So I'm gonna start off right away and I'm gonna start with my absolute favorite because once you do this once, you'll probably never do it again. Although in my case, I actually had to do it twice before I never did it again. But the last time really stuck, stuck with me. So, dying to know what it is. All right, number one, never feed your fish directly from a container. Hey, what are you doing? I'm feeding our fish some healthy Northfin Bug Pro. Oh. Ah! Go get me a net, go get me a net. You don't shake it. You don't dump out a little food because maybe in my case, my hands were wet. I didn't want to reach my fingers into the little little pebbles so I just I'll be real careful there's not that much in there I'll just do a little shake 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 nope that didn't work out so well the first time I did it wasn't that bad I think I was able to scoop out most of the food but yet again I, I did it later and it was a big catastrophe there was food everywhere and so yeah don't ever do it just put some on your hand put some in your finger and know exactly what you have there before you put it in the tank and it'll be way better. Number two is my second favorite. That's probably the reason that it's number two is, and I've mentioned this before. And when I have mentioned this before in another video, there were a lot of comments and people apparently have the exact same thinking. <clears throat> if you're a fish keeper, never, never put your tanks on the floor. At least very close to the floor if you want to see the fish in there if it's breeding if there's a reason for that and you have to really maximize your storage knock yourself out but if you want to see your scape if you want to see your fish in there don't put it on the floor i have two tanks down there and you know i've got got bad knees i've got bad back it's just it's really hard to get down there and that's the first reason the second reason is when it's time to change your water the, the siphon just doesn't work so well. I drain my water into a bucket. I don't use the floor drain like Jason tells me to just because it's <clears throat> behind my nano wall. There isn't a lot of room. That's, that's another episode right there. So it's, it goes out, the water goes out so slow. Time passes, it just doesn't go and you've got things to do and your fish are like, are you done yet? And so don't do it and you can't see them. Number three, I can't tell you how many times I've done this and <clears throat> just don't do it. A fish keeper should never buy a fish before you have a tank set up. Hey, you know what I was thinking? You might as well just put Fluffy in this tank here. It's empty. It, it'll hold for a while. Yeah, no, I, I, I haven't completely named him Fluffy yet. I don't know his name. And no, he's not going in there. He needs to be a little bit more cozy. There aren't even any decent plants in there. Yeah, but there'll be snails. Yeah, no, no. So help me set up a tank. It's like 11 o'clock at night. Well, okay, just do it fast. If you're like me, you're gonna go to the pet store and you're just gonna Go by the bettas. I know with other people, it's gonna be other fish. I go by the bettas. I tell myself not to, but I do. And then I see somebody, I see more than one somebody, and then I have to have them. So I, I get them into the car and they're in their little cup. And I love them and I take them home and I put them maybe on my nano wall. And then you get home and you got your stuff to do and it's 10 o'clock at night. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have to set up a tank. And usually it's not just setting up a tank. It, you want to make it a nice home right away for your little buddy. So you want to decorate it and put the plants in. That means you got to find some plants. You got to escape it. 
you have to get all your supplies, you have to get the air set up, the, sometimes you don't have the supplies, so you, you're causing your friend, your husband, your spouse to help out, and they maybe don't want to do that. So just do yourself a favor. If you want a new fish, set up the tank beforehand, and then go shopping for a fish. It could be like Murphy's Law and you won't find a fish, but you'll at least have everything all set up, ready to go. Number four, something that a fish keeper should never do. This is related to driftwood, specifically larger pieces of driftwood. And I can say this from experience because in the last, oh, I wanna say two or three weeks, I've set up two tanks. One's over there, and one's back over there, a 40 gallon and a 55 gallon. If you're dealing with a large piece of driftwood, chances are you have not soaked it. I never soak it. Maybe I should try. That could be like 4B. Soak your driftwood before you put it in a tank because guess what? It's gonna float. <laughs> you can't keep me down. So not only are you trying to get the perfect scape, you're trying to get that piece of driftwood to stay down. So first of all, either attach your driftwood to a rock before you put it in the tank. You can wrap wire around it, string around it, something or have somebody there by you. Because when I set up the 40 gallon and when I set up the 55 gallon, nobody was around. I figured I'd just get it done. It'd be great. It wasn't great. It was, it took like three hours for each one and it wasn't pretty. It wasn't fun. It's not fun. It's not fun struggling with a piece of driftwood and all by yourself. Just wait until I get out of this tank. Number five, something that a fish keeper should never do is related to plants. Since I think a lot of people do have planted tanks. Now, I don't know if this is just me or if there's a lot of people that will agree with this. I, I really don't know, but it, it's, it's something that I will never do again. And it's my list, so I, I don't know. It's, it's, I included it. Never float Specifically, you're a Nubius when you get at home. I always look at fish when I go to the store and I always look at plants and I usually go and get plants. So I've gotten really good at not leaving the plants in their container. I did that once, I forgot about them, I put them in the corner, I totally forgot about them and they died. <laughs> Should have kept a closer eye on me. Now I'm good, I open them up out of the container and I put them in the snail tank. We have a snail tank, which for right now, that's where I put my plants, but now it's getting too full. So I will be having a tank dedicated for plants. However, don't just be like me and put them in there, just float them. Hey, can you grab me a couple plants? Yeah, what do you want? Some anubias or maybe a crib. What happened to this thing? Oh. That's why I float. I, I don't do that anymore. You know, you could just plant them like in the in the ground, and then they would be okay. Yeah. Because you're you're really nice Nubius that you picked out. Uh, it's not gonna look like that after a while because you can forget about it in the tank too, which I do. And then it grows leaves out of other areas, and it's no longer an attractive looking Nubius. So there you go. Those are my five tips. Oh, and just wanted to send a uh, super thank you, shout out to John and Lisa at KG Tropicals for these sweet shirts. And I'm sure there's a lot of tips you guys have out there. You guys leave the best tips and the best comments. Some of them are really very, very funny. Leave your comment down below of the things that you would tell somebody. If you're a fish keeper, don't ever do this. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a good week and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. And I'll see you soon too.